kids. Fuck the kids? Yeah. You have just tuned in to the Mag Nerd Podcast. Your home for everything in music, anime, and gaming. What is up guys, Shown Up The King here, back with another video, and today I'm bringing you some G.I. Joe news for the week of January 20th, 2021. All right guys, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, you know, the jig is up on two fronts. So the way, before I jump into it, let me just say the way the format is gonna work. First is gonna be news on G.I. Joe, and then towards the end, I'm gonna have some, some kind of general uh, action figure news so definitely stick around if you like stuff more than Joe's but if you're here just for the G.I. Joe stuff I'll be talking about that first but again feel free to stick around if you're interested in other action figures from other lines all right uh, again also shameless plug make sure you guys are subscribed to the uh, channel uh, make sure you hit that bell notification so you are updated with all the latest and greatest from G.I. Joe video games, anime, music, everything that your little nerd hearts desire. All right, so without further ado, let's get into this news update. All right, so first I wanna start off with a little bit of a rant. Uh, and this rant is actually, you know, going to be targeted out to the collective community. Uh, and again, like I said, I actually created a video about this about a week ago and I ended up deleting it. And I just kinda wanted to just collect my thoughts calmly before uh, talking about this. What I wanted to talk about first is, and again, this is in relation to G.I. Joe, is the the controversy between Pop Finder and BrickSeek no longer um, pulling up information on um, G.I. Joe classified Vipers and um, Firefly. Um, I think we all suspected why it was going on, but I think it's pretty much been confirmed now that uh, Target has basically shut off the connection access to BrickSeek and um, PopFinder, so you can no longer check and see what the stock is. Again, it's very upsetting uh, for multiple reasons. On you know for for collector side and also for the Target side, uh, but the reason why I wanted to kind of rant about it is because again I knew this was going to happen, and I'll tell you why. If you guys have watched my videos over the past couple of months when I've been talking about GI Joes and we've been talking about you know just toy hunting in general. And you hear me say or talk about the app that I use to find stuff, and you don't hear that because I don't talk about it. And there's a reason for that, and this is their exact reason for that. And again, I know some people uh, will probably try to say, oh, you're just being selfish. But no, it's, it's not me being selfish. It's just being me being smart and understanding how this stuff works. And I'll explain. So essentially what happened was... Um, uh, Target got tired of collectors coming in there asking their employees to go in the back to look for Joes. They got tired of them saying, hey, you know, waving in their face, hey, I saw this on Pop Finder or I saw this on BrickSeek and, you know, you need to go back there and get it. It says you have six. I need you to go back there and get five or whatever you were asking for. So eventually, you know, I guess somehow Target either. Now, I've confirmed that a bunch of Target managers are basically just zeroing out the Joes. Like, they'll come in on the truck, They'll confirm what they are, they'll scan them in originally, and then they'll immediately it will zero them out so that they don't filter the pop finder. And so then now, anytime that you search for them, you're not gonna, they're not gonna show up in any search results. And again, the reason why I'm upset about that is because again, I always had a policy, and again, I thought it was common knowledge, but again, I've watched multiple videos where collectors casually just drop, name drop, how they found the Joes. And again, I'm not saying you don't help other people. What I'm saying is, is that maybe you should be a little bit more covert about it. To me, it's, 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 I like to give uh, two examples. And, and the one quick example is, again, I am a huge anime fan. You know, there was an anime website called Kiss Anime that has been around for about 15 plus years. And everybody knew that that was the place you wanted to go if you wanted to watch free anime. And what ended up happening is, is that it got shut down because... Uh, a bunch of people looking for clout on TikTok decided that it would be a great idea to just keep name dropping Kiss Anime whenever they wanted to show a video. So like you'd watch a TikTok, somebody would show a really cool anime scene and they'd say, oh, if you want to watch it, watch it on tech, oh, and you know, watch it on Kiss Anime, watch it on Kiss Anime. And basically what ended up happening is that it started going viral. Everybody started talking about it, you know, increased interest, increased exposure, 
basically these anime companies who don't want people watching um, anime l illegally basically attack Kiss Anime and got them shut down because again, it got too big. Again, they, again, when you when you have something that's good, you want to kind of keep it. You don't want it to become mainstream because if it becomes mainstream, it becomes hot and then shit gets shut down. Same thing with you know file sharing. Like there are a bunch of file sharing websites out there to get free movies, free music, all of these things, and they stay that way because people don't talk about it a lot. If you want to hit hook somebody up on the side, slide them the information, go for it. But don't just go broadcasting it to the entire world because again, once you become hot, people won't start coming for you. And that's the exact same thing that happened with Pop Finder and with Brixie. Again, neither one of those services are illegal. But again, when you're walking into a Target and you're going up to these employees and you're going up to the managers and you're sitting there saying stuff like Pop Finder, you're flashing in their face on my Pop Finder says you got six and you got six, so you better go get it or whatever. Eventually, they're going to get hip and be like, yo, what the fuck is this Pop Finder they talking about? Yo, we need to look into this. How are they going to have more uh, upgraded numbers than we do? So that's what ended up happening. It was almost worse than the PlayStation 5, which is crazy to me, but... Uh, the way that I use, and again, if you guys want to know how I did it, I literally would go into the store and I would just simply say, I'd say, hey, I saw this on your Target app, and I would specifically drop the Target app, and I would say, hey, you got this in stock. And again, I would give them the DCPI number, and they would look it up on their machine, because again, they can't get mad at their own system that says it's in stock. It's one thing to say it's a Target app versus saying it's a Pop Finder or going there and saying Brixie. I always say Target app, or I just say, I just say, hey, I, I, is this available? I don't ever name drop what I what I'm what I use to get it because again I don't want to make the whole the, the block hot, but apparently that happened and now you know Brickseek no longer works for uh, Finding Joe's. I don't know if it'll ever be restored, but again you know it it is what it is. So the second thing I wanted to talk about is actually in relation to what I, we actually have kind of a confirmed story now on what happened with this wave what happened with joe's why is these uh classified line the cobra island stuff why is it so hard to find and get your hands on these figures what went wrong and this different information actually comes from toy wizards i will actually link the um in the description to the actual article i um found this a couple days ago and i kind of you know wanted to read it for myself first before i bought the information to you guys but again i will link it below if you want to if you want to read it so apparently, um, and again, this is from Toy Wizards, they were invited to a roundtable discussion with Hasbro's lead guys on G.I. Joe Classified and actually the Transformers team. And during the discussion, you know, uh, Toy Wizards, they kind of broke the news, like, you know, talking about the repaints. And again, once I finish this story, I'll show some images of the repaints and talk about some other Joe news. But for right now, you know, that was kind of what the discussion was. And basically... The news was very interesting, and they just kind of acknowledged the fact that some items in the line were very hard to find, you know, talking about, you know, the the Cobra Island stuff. And, you know, they even mentioned that they were working on stuff that was three years from it being on the shelves. And then, you know, that's, you know, that's great news that they got, they're finally about three minutes out. But, you know, then they started to go into a little bit of things about COVID. You know, everybody likes to use COVID, and they didn't realize that, the classified series popularity was going to be that high and that and that's essentially what happened so essentially you know gi joe has been a brand that has been diminished for well over 10 years nobody was really checking for joe's especially in the three and three quarter inch scale i know i don't collect three and three quarter inch scale anything like to me six inch scale 112 scale is the scale for me you might get me to do like a one six scale every now and again something like seven inches but my bread and butter is six inches, plain and simple. And for them, when they decided to do G.I. Joe, they didn't know it was going to be a hit. So they didn't want to take a chance by, you know, flooding the market with these G.I. Joe figures and then they just sit on the shelves. So they were legitimately surprised at how big and how, you know, explosive the, uh, the, the, the want and need for these Joes are, you know, namely with the Cobra Trooper and, of course, now with the Viper. So they uh, they did say, and again, this is confirmed, it did say that Hasbro did confirm that several hard-to-get Joes and Cobras will be re-released as second runs in the later half of 2021. 
And the Cobra Trooper will be an example. Of, I'm sorry, the Cobra Soldier was an example of that. So it, it actually um, will just say that they're going to be re-released. And I guess they're going to do the Cobra Soldier. And then they're going to probably end up doing a re-release for the Cobra Viper, which is good news. And then what they also mentioned is that they're also going to, um, there is a strong possibility of them also re-releasing higher sought after figures like Baroness, Beachhead, and Storm Shadow. So again, there are opportunities. And again, I knew that about the Storm Shadow because the Storm Shadow we got from Amazon was like the Arctic Snow, Sh Snow Shadow. So I knew that they were going to have to come out with like a classic, you know, Storm Shadow. So that doesn't surprise me at all. And this is an actual quote from them in regards to scalpers. You know, I guys, I mentioned scalpers before. And the quote says, if you are, if any of you are scalpers, uh, get get your high prices in now because they're going to be basically re-releasing these figures and then basically the values are going to drop dramatically. Drastically, I should say. Now, that was pretty much it from that actual story. I mean, like I said, you can go read the entire article. They talk about the repaints. And again, I'll show you one in a brief second. But essentially what I just wanted to kind of, you know, bring it to your attention is, is number one, the reason why no one's able to see uh, their Joes on Brick Seek and uh, Pop Finder anymore is because of the target cut it off. They don't, they're either, they're either zeroing out the account so that you can, um, you can't see what's going on. So you actually have to go into the store to figure it out. And I know this is true because um, I was able to get a Firefly, but I was only able to get a Firefly through one of my um, hunting buddies out here where I live. His name is Chris. Shout out to you, Chris. You rock. Uh, he randomly went to a Target at like 8 a.m. and on the shelf was just sitting six fireflies. And he called me up on the phone and was like, yo, Jay, you know, I, I, they got fireflies. Do you need them? And I was like, hell yeah, give me two. So he was able to pick me up some fireflies. So I was very, very excited about that. And that's kind of what tipped me off to let me know that something was up. Because again, he even said when he was in the store that he checked Pop Finder as he was standing there and Pop Finder was showing zero. So that was just like the key signal right there that something was going on. And then after that, there was like dozens and dozens of people who just started finding Joes and Target on random runs. And I think that's kind of how they wanted it. They never wanted people to be able to have that instant access to, you know, just make their employees go running in the back to go grabbing figures. And again, to me, I don't blame the collectors on this because to me, I'm like, if you if the people at Target did their fucking jobs, and just put the damn figures out on the shelf, we wouldn't have to ask you guys for anything. And that's kind of how I look at it. I'm like, put the shit out on the shelf, and then once the people go to the shelf, whatever, whoever gets it, gets it. it. It is what it is. But again, that is that one thing. And again, like I said, you know, they're going to be re-releasing these figures, so just know that you might have another opportunity to get Baroness and the Cobra Trooper and Cobra Soldier and, you know, all the hard to find Joes are going to be trying to re-release them because again they do understand that this was something that was um, un unexpected. All right, so next um, thing I wanted to talk about is the repaints. So as you can see here, we have um, the repaint with Scarlet, and um, this is actually a repaint that I'm actually very excited to get, uh, simply because I own the regular Scarlet. But on my Scarlet, if and again on a lot of people's Scarlet, you can clearly tell that nobody loved that head sculpt. And so what they all did was basically switch her head sculpt with uh, Black Widow, either the Black Widow Walmart exclusive, or like the Black Widow that you can find at like the Target with the whole white suit on it. Basically any sort of Black Widow figure, people were swapping their heads out and putting this uh, on her body. And actually, as I look back at my. Uh, at my cabinet, I still have my, um, my Scarlet has the uh, Black Widow head on it. So as you can see here, and the reason why people, and again, me personally, I hated the head sculpt. I, I really hated the head sculpt. I thought the head sculpt looked really cartoonish. It looked like she came straight out of Fortnite. And again, I'm not a Fortnite guy. And again, I don't like that cartoony look. If I'm collecting the action figures, I want them to have a realistic looking face. And you can clearly see here um, that, and again, this photo is provided by His Tank where they did a nice side-by-side -side where you can see on the right-hand side is the repaint for Scarlet. On the left-hand side is the original. And again, you can see they got rid of the golds and turned them into just like the muted blacks. And again, they got rid of the blue highlights. And, and again, they made her hair a deeper version of red. And again, they just made her face look more 
realistic. It doesn't look like it came straight out of Fortnite, and I praise them wholeheartedly on that. Now, also, they um, are releasing another roadblock, and they're going to re-release Duke as well. And again, those are going to have more darker tones and not so many like color pops to them. All right. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about, still talking about Joe's, is Flame Toys. So Flame Toys is actually releasing a new line of G.I. Joe figures. It's just released today. This information is coming out uh, via Instagram from the Flame Toys official um, you know, Instagram account. Um, essentially, this is going to be a new articulated snake eyes. As you can see here, it looks fantastic. And again, it's also going to be a uh, Storm Shadow, which again, looks fantastic. Now, usually I'm the only, we, we know very limited information on this right now. Uh, we do know that typically these figures run around $50. Again, I'm not 100% sure if it's on a 6-inch scale or a 7-inch scale, but I know it's one of the two. I'm really, really excited about this. And again, I definitely want to add this to my collection. Hopefully it's on a 6-inch scale, because if it is, it's a must-buy for me. All right, and that's it for you guys, Joe guys. Now I just wanted to do a quick update for my um, regular um, collectors. Uh, right now we do have the Model Fans um, Dyson Ichigo action figure. Um, this figure is actually releasing, I believe, next week. I know that has been confirmed that they are now um, getting ready to ship. Um, so definitely get your, um, I already have my pre-order in now, so I'm just trying to, you know, wait till I can get that alert so that I can go out and uh, pay for this bad boy because I really, really want this. And also, we do have that these are now in stock and should probably be shipping this week. It is the, uh, you know, Kaioken Super Saiyan Blue Goku. Uh, this one is from um, uh, Demonical Fit. And again, it does come with the body and it does come with the uh, blue ore in the background. This is also shipping this week, so definitely keep a lookout for that. And finally, I wanted to talk about this. Whew! Flame toys, you motherfuckers. I mean, god damn. Flame toys revealed this week that they are getting into the Power Rangers. And again, you guys know, my number one toy of 2020 was my Flame Toys Optimus Prime. And this is going to be a new Dino Megazord that they're going to be doing in their stylistic ways. And you can just tell from this picture that this thing is going to be fucking amazing. I mean, you can tell by like the pterodactyl on the front. You got the, the wings on the back that look awesome. It just looks really stylized and like kind of like done to mesh. It almost looks like the back of it looks like it's um, Epion from Wing from Gundam Wing. Now, again, uh, we don't have a lot of details right now, but from my understanding is, is that this is supposed to be a combiner, so I believe that this is a transforming thing. But again, follow Fling Toys on Instagram to get more details. I'm going to definitely be buying this one, so uh, that's just a no-brainer. All right? So that's it for the news today, guys. Again, uh, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Ring bell notifications. And again, I appreciate any comments or thumbs up that you can give a brother. Uh, see you guys next time. Mm.